Live view of Starship as it awaits its first ever integrated flight test from Starbase, Texas, in just a little over from 40 minutes from now. Today, we're hoping to see our super heavy booster and Starship spacecraft, collectively referred to as Starship, lift off together for the first time. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Kate Tice, Quality Systems Engineering Manager here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. And I'm Shiva Bhardwaj, a space operations engineer here at SpaceX. Now, as many of you know, Starship is SpaceX's latest and largest vehicle developed to date. It represents a fully reusable transportation system designed to carry both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond. If you've been following the development of Starship over the last couple of years, you know we've been doing a lot of testing leading up to this big one. Once fully developed, it will be the world's most powerful launch vehicle with twice the thrust of Saturn V rocket and the ability to carry up to 150 metric tons to orbit. For reference, a one liter bottle of water is one kilogram, so 150, 150 metric tons is basically 150,000 one liter bottles of water, or as I like to think of it, one rather lonely blue whale. <sighs> Now, today's test will be the first of many as we work towards transitioning Starship from a developmental to an operational program. Our primary objective today is to gather as much data as we can around the fully integrated vehicles. That means the booster and the Starship and the ground systems. While we have flown Starship in the past, this will be the first attempt of Super Heavy and the first opportunity to validate how the two vehicles operate together. Any data that we get helps improve the, that helps improve the future builds of Starship will be considered a success for the purposes of today's test. Every milestone beyond that is icing on the cake. The further we fly, the more data we can collect. If all goes well, today's flight test could last as long as 90 minutes from liftoff uh, to an expected hard ocean landing for Starship. Whether we end the test with a hard landing or a rapid unscheduled disassembly, <laughs> or some combination of both, excitement is pretty much guaranteed. Now, if it does all go well, Super Heavy will fire up its 33 Raptor engines and it'll lift off from the launch pad down in South Texas. About three minutes into the flight, we're gonna hope to see the Super Heavy separate from the Starship spacecraft. It'll then perform a flip maneuver. So there's that, you can see that on your screen. And then it'll boost back in order to make a hard landing in the Gulf of Mexico. And while that's happening, we hope to see Starship's six second stage engines ignite and watch as Starship coasts for about an hour at altitudes ranging between 150 and 250 kilometers before re-entering Earth's atmosphere and make its own hard landing in the Pacific Ocean about 250-ish kilometers offshore. Now, we are getting great camera views right now, but that's because we are on the launch pad. So we've got umbilicals and, and connections straight to the vehicle, but we aren't expecting to get very many good views once we get past uh, booster separation. Yeah, we do promise though, for any views that we do get, we will share them in real time. Uh, we are watching live with you all. So uh, we're excited to see those views uh, ourselves as well. Now in a little bit, we are going to take a closer look at the vehicle and the launch pad. But first, today is a super exciting day. Everyone on the teams across Starship have been preparing, uh, doing a number of tests and dress rehearsals for today's launch attempt. Yeah, that's exactly right. In fact, we saw a nice little recap of those tests in the intro video to today's webcast. Um, for those of you that are following along, you know that many of those tests ended in those rapid unscheduled disassemblies or RUDs as we like to call them. Um, and it's been a long road to today. Um, just in 2022 alone, we had nine static fires. Um, we've had a couple of wet dress rehearsals. Uh, and of course, the launch control team has done numerous simulations as well. So major shout out to the teams that have been preparing for today's full up integrated test. In fact, we've got to get Starship to orbit. The booster alone stands about 70 meters tall and is about the same height as a fully integrated Falcon 9, but with a diameter roughly 2.5 times that of Falcon 9 and with 33 much larger engines. Yeah, and having those engines, and oh my gosh, I love this shot. We can see uh, looking up into the launch mount at the 33 engines on the booster. 
those are each of the Raptor engines that's going to power today's launch attack. Yeah, this is an incredible view. One of my favorite views that we're going to get today. Uh, we don't have this kind of view on our Falcon 9 launches, so um, this is so exciting to see. You can even make out uh, the paint markers indicating which engine is which. Like we said, there are 33 of them. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of fire that's going to be coming out from uh, those engines in just uh, over 31 minutes from now. Um, as we mentioned before, uh, there are 33 of them on the, on the Super Heavy, the booster, uh, and the we don't see it right now, but the cluster in the, in the center are the ones that are actually going to gimbal and help uh, steer the booster back down for its water landing in the Gulf. Yeah, and they're a little bit different, Kate, than our Falcon engines. Um, so on Falcon, we use a, a gas generator cycle. Here's a fantastic shot actually at the, the inner stage. So we can see the six engines that are on the ship side, three gimbling in the middle, and then the, the vacuum engines. You can see two of them and the other ones on the other side of the cluster in the middle here. So Raptor's a little bit different. It uses something called stage combustion, which means we basically pre-burn both the uh, the fuel side and the ox side, and then get those up to the right temperatures and pressures and then mix them in the combustion chamber. It allows us to get higher thrust and higher efficiency on these engines than on Falcon 9. Starship, or the spacecraft, is the second stage and makes up the top portion of the vehicle. It's designed for carrying passengers and cargo between destinations on Earth, Earth orbit, and planetary destinations. It stands 50 meters tall, a little taller than the Statue of Liberty. It's comprised of six Raptors. We saw those uh, just moments ago. Three of them are optimized for sea level and the other three are vacuum engines. Um, and like they're op optimized to operate in the vacuum of space. They provide a maximum of 258,000 tons of thrust in vacuum. Uh, the spacecraft is also outfitted with four flaps to help aerodynamically control the vehicle's attitude during atmospheric flight and enable precise landing at the intended location. You can see a view of those flaps there. Now you can see the, the entire stack is vertical, and that's because Starship is designed for vertical takeoff and landing, as opposed to taking off and landing like an airplane. And that's really important because we don't have runways on the Moon and Mars. Fortunately, gravity at both of those destinations is not nearly as high as it is here on Earth. On Mars, it's about a, a third of what Earth's gravity is. And on the Moon, the gravity is just a sixth of what it is here. So Starship can take off in both of those cases without needing the super heavy booster like we need here on Earth. Now, for today's test, Starship does not have its landing legs attached. And that's because we aren't going to be attempting to return to the launch site or land on land. It's going to be doing another hard water landing at the end of today's test. We can't wait. <laughs> Starship is wrapped in a heat shield, which is composed of 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles designed to insulate the vehicle during atmospheric entry, where temperatures can be as high as 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. The hex-shaped tiles, like these ones that we have here, uh, roughly make up about two-thirds of the vehicle. Uh, there's a couple of different geometries. The one that I have is for the circular portions of uh, the vehicle, so it has this, this curvature to it, um, and the one that Shiva has. Yeah, this, uh, this kind is a hexagonal shape, um, and there's several thousand of these all across the body of the vehicle. And it's, it's worth saying, we need these because when a spacecraft re-enters from orbital velocity, it's going faster than the speed of sound and, and causes a lot of heat to build up uh, that has to get dissipated by these heat shield tiles. Yeah, one the thing that's really cool about these is they're, they're super lightweight. Even just holding them, um, we're able to even just like hear how, how um, hollow they are because of the construction. Um, but they do a great job of dispersing that heat um, during that atmospheric reentry. Um, we actually produce these in-house at what we like to call the SpaceX bakeries. <laughs> uh, and they're located in Texas and Florida. Uh, so it's something that uh, we designed and, and, and build in-house. And uh, like we said, there's thousands of them. Uh, there, uh, you can kind of see them on the exterior of the, of the vehicle. So at this point in time, we are at uh, T minus uh, 27 minutes and 18 seconds. So let's head on over to John Innsbrucker for an update on the countdown. Hey, John. Yeah, it's like we said before, um, any data that we can collect today is super helpful. And that's exactly what we're doing. We are continuing to collect this data and allow the teams to have uh, be better informed for the next attempt. 
Um, unfortunately, due to the uh, needing to recycle the propellant, we are looking at a minimum of 48 hours uh, until we are able to uh, attempt this flight test again. Um, so we're, we're not quite sure what that timing will be at the moment, but we're looking at a minimum of 48 minutes or excuse me, of 48 hours at this point in time. But Shiva, exactly as you said, things look a little bit different on launch day. And um, we allowed the countdown to do its job, to basically get to this point, uh, to allow the teams to work through the issues. And uh, we're going to continue, like we said before, we're going to continue all this down all the way to T minus 10 seconds. Um, and that will really allow the teams to pretend like this is launch day and um, continue and gather that data. Yeah, okay, that's... On the one hand, uh, it's a little bittersweet. On the other hand, we watched them go all the way through first stage propellant load, just now wrapping up the second stage, even the header tanks up under the nose of the Starship that you can see on the uh, monitors. Uh, actually, that all went very well today. Uh, the weather was excellent. Uh, everything was looking good. Sadly, we just have the one issue, uh, but that is letting the team continue to count down and we're gonna continue with it here until uh, we get the clock hold at T minus 10 seconds. Yeah, so for those of you um, that have just joined us, we're now at T minus one minute and 30 seconds to what would have been the launch of our Starship flight test, but unfortunately due to a stage one issue, we are going to uh, utilize today as a wet dress rehearsal. Uh, instead, we are not going to attempt launch. Um, the teams are, uh, basically saying that we're, we're scrubbing our launch attempt for today, and we are expecting a minimum of 48 hours in order to recycle. Um, so it's all good news though. <laughs> There's yep. nothing really to be sad about other than we had hoped to be able to lift off today, but um, that's okay. Now, one thing to point out for folks, when we do come back, uh, when we uh, clear this and we fly, one of the things you'll hear in the last minute, you won't be hearing us because we'll be listening to the countdown. But at T-minus 30 seconds, that's when the flight director would give the final go for launch. I'd uh, love to have heard that this morning, but uh, <laughs> something to look forward to. Absolutely. The other thing to look at is at T-minus 6 seconds, we begin lighting the engines. Up on your monitor, you can see there, T-minus 40 seconds. We did hit the 40-second hold point, and they are holding for a moment. In the end, they will release that hold. We'll go the last 30 seconds. But yes, when we do get to day of launch, the last thing to look at is in the last six seconds, light the Raptor engines in succession. So unlike Falcon 9, we're gonna have to do that a little longer.